I'm with Dr. Douglas Packer at the AF Symposium, and he's the principal investigator of the Cavana study, which is aimed to compare catheter ablation versus antiarrhythmic drug therapy for atrial fibrillation. Dr. Dr. Packer, um, could you could you please tell us what's the rationale behind this study? We had two different kinds of treatment for patients with atrial fibrillation. We had the ablation approach, and then we had drug therapy approaches. So we were looking at two different approaches. Either one have been, could have been uh, correct or could have been better than the other. In a way, it's a strategy to trial. And so what we did is we asked the question, in the way of a hypothesis, that ablation would be preeminent to drug therapy. So we made a hypothesis or a prediction that patients who were treated with catheter ablation approaches would do better overall long term. Now what does that mean? What that means overall long term is that they would live longer so that the mortality rate from atrial fibrillation itself would be less in patients who were treated with catheter ablation. We also are looking at strokes, bleeding, hospitalization, and serious complications. Now there are three or four other kinds of uh, secondary endpoints we're looking at. Cardiovascular mortality and hospitalization, heart failure, hospitalization, heart failure mortality. We're looking at recurrence rates. So that's very important and most of the trials that you see are looking at a, compar a comparison of drug therapy versus ablative therapy in preventing atrial fibrillation. And, and that's fine, but we think that the more important questions for Cabana are mortality, strokes, cost, and quality of life. And so this trial will actually perhaps be most important because it will give us information about whether or not ablation should be reimbursed, whether or not the benefits from it outweigh the risks, and what it actually costs a patient in 2014 to have atrial fibrillation. Could we say that this study is the first of its kind up to now? There have been a number of smaller studies looking at a comparison of a very small group of patients who had atrial fibrillation. For example, studies that look at only 100 patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation and perhaps no other heart disease. So the thing that's different between those trials that have been performed and Cabana is Cabana is much larger. It's not just looking at patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. It's not just looking at young patients, it's looking at older patients who have underlying disease, who have persistent and chronic atrial fibrillation, and we're looking at cost, and we're looking at quality of life. So in that regard, it is the first of its kind. In that regard, uh, how many patients are you actually aiming to enroll? So in order to answer the question of which strategy is best, we need to have at least 2,200 patients. If we have 2,200 patients, and we can follow for a period of at least three years, and the majority of them for five years, we'll have enough patients to answer the questions. It sounds quite ambitious. How many patients have you got so far? So we've enrolled 1,400, actually, 1,391, and by tomorrow we'll enroll two or three more, but in <laughs> essence, 1,400 patients. And we need 800 more, and we hope to have them enrolled by the end of 2014, or just a little bit into 2015. And you're right, it's a very ambitious study. Um, which countries are in this study? Which countries are you considering for this study? So we have about 140 centers, so the, the U.S., Canada, U.K., we have centers in Germany, Czech Republic, centers in Italy, Russia, 
China, South Korea, uh, and, and, and so the majority of centers are in that group. There are a couple of other centers in uh, outside countries, but that's where the majority of the recruiting is being done. It seems like you are enrolling everywhere in the world. We're trying. <laughs> We're um, trying. And when are you expecting to finish enrollment? I think we'll be through with enrollment sometime in the next year and a half. Um, we hope to have it done by the end of this year, but it might be a couple of months into 2015. And then we'll follow those patients to the end of 2017 into 2018, and then be able to report the data in 2018. So it takes a long time to do a trial like this and get all the information that you want to get. So we will have preliminary data in five years' time, basically. We'll have preliminary data in about four years' time. We'll have publishable data in about five years' time. Is anything else that you would like to say to our uh, audience? I think it's important that the audience knows that this is an incredibly important trial because we don't have the answers. So if physicians are claiming that ablation is better than drug therapy or vice versa, we simply don't have the data to support that yet. And so I think that the study needs to be done so that we can answer that kind of question and so that a patient who comes to see a physician will have an idea based on data as to what approach is going to be best. If our audience wants to find more information, where could they go? So the Cabana trial can be found at uh, cabanatrial.org. We have a website that has a lot of information that's helpful, not just in enrolling in the trial, but information about atrial fibrillation, what it is, how to treat it, information about anticoagulation, a lot of information that's just good patient level information. So it's cabanatrial.org. Thank you very much, Dr. Packer. This is Angela Gonzalez reporting for Cardiac Rhythm News. Thank you.